pray in share warriors and I always have to move my phone because I can't tell whether I'm recording on this camera at the bottom or not anyway I hope you had an awesome Sunday not Sunday Monday sorry I skipped Sunday I skipped Sunday but I did something so amazing that I want to share with you later um, anyway it's Monday hope you had an awesome Monday did. I don't feel like I got as much accomplished as I would have liked to have, but tomorrow is a new day, and uh, I will try tomorrow. So today we're doing Psalms 28. I didn't write it on here. Yesterday, I watched SoCal Harvest on YouTube. It was so good. I can't spell tonight. Anyway, we're doing Psalm 28 tonight. I don't know whether I said that while ago or not. So, let's pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you that you are a mighty God, that you are on your throne and you are in control. That There is no God like you. God, you are from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you for being our, our uh, creator and sustainer, our protector, our provider our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. You are mighty and powerful and magnificent, God. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths. But God, you are also loving and kind and compassionate and faithful and trustworthy and patient God you want none to perish thank you for loving me thank you for calling us as your children thank you for loving us and calling us as your children we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength God we just pray for the lost God we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to your truths God we just pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to see where they are, to remember the relationship that they had with you, to return and repent, and to be reconciled, God. God, we just pray for all the disasters that are going on this a volcano eruption in La Palma, God. We just pray for all these people. We pray for safety. All the earthquakes, the floods, the droughts, God, the bad storms, we pray for all these people that their needs would be met, God, that um, people would come to them and be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that uh, you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, and that they would feel your presence, God. We pray for all the sick people. There's many sick people that I'm praying for right now, God, that I have on my mind, that I have on my heart. Please heal them, God. Um, let my friend recover from her surgery quickly, God. We just pray for these families for strength, God. We just pray for all the medical workers, God, that you would bless them. We pray for all the people that are standing up against this vaccine, God. We pray for these medical workers. We pray for law enforcement. We pray for firefighters and first responders and for our military, God. These people that are standing on your truth, they're standing on what they believe in, God. We just pray that you would bless them if they do lose their jobs, God, that you would bless them with better jobs, that you would bless their families, God. What a hard decision to make and what an unnecessary decision to make. 
So God, we just pray that you would give them strength and that they would feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right. Let me get a drink of water. My throat's a little scratchy. Let's see what Psalms 28 is. I don't really feel glad to read anything else tonight. In addition, <clears throat> I'm just going to read Psalms 28. And um, then I'm going to read what I shared about my experience yesterday. I had such great experiences yesterday. And I had to share on Facebook. All right, so rejoicing in answered prayer, a psalm of David. Wow, that is so good. That is so good. We do need to rejoice when our prayers get answered. I saw answered prayers yesterday. It was pretty exciting. Um, to you I will cry, O Lord my rock, do not be silent to me. Lest, if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice. Other eyes itching tonight. Hear the voice of my supplications. When I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary, do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve, because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Wow, that's so good. Okay, I'll read what my study part says. It says, The psalmist cried out to God in a time of need. His reference to the pit or death shows that he felt totally alone and abandoned by God in his experience. The poem's tone dramatically changed as the psalmist blessed the Lord for hearing his cry and glorified the Lord as his strength and shield. You know, sometimes God doesn't hear us because we have separated ourselves from him by sin. And sometimes he doesn't hear our prayers. We need to repent of our sins. We need to have our hearts right with God. We don't need to stay in our sins. So many times. So many times, so many times, I have all these things popping up on my phone. So many times, we, um, we think that we can stay in our sin, but God does not, he does not like sin. Sin is an abomination to him. All sin, the littlest, the biggest, all sin is an abomination to him. But because Jesus came to save us, when we are saved, we receive forgiveness. But we have to ask. We have to ask for that forgiveness. And repentance means turning away. It doesn't mean staying in your sin. And Jesus... Jesus hung out with sinners. 
you know, that's right. Jesus did hang out with sinners. And we are to love sinners. But we are not to love or accept the sin. That's being okay by God because it's not. I hear a lot lately about, well, you're standing up for your truth. But the truth that we will be judged against by God, by a holy God, is his truth, not our truth. So it's just, that's where we are now. You can read Matthew 24, and we are exactly where Jesus said we would be. And I don't know how long we'll be here. We may be here for a few more years. We may be out of here tonight. Who knows? Only God knows. Only God knows when he is going to send Jesus. So we need to have our hearts right with God. And we need to repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness. That's very important in our Christian walk. Very important. All right, well, I'm going to read to you what I shared on this song, and then I have to go take care of some stuff, go feed my child. All right. We're in a scary time right now. We're in the great falling away from God. And we are in the Great Awakening, which was, is an exciting time as Christians. We are seeing more and more people come to the saving grace of Jesus through forgiveness. So, I shared uh, this song and message by Phil Wickham, which really impacted me spiritually last night as I watched the so the SoCal Harvest Crusade that is put on by Greg Laurie and his team, his harvest team. So the lyrics of this song are so true. It has always been God in my life, even when I strayed away or even when I wasn't saved. He was there protecting me. He knew me before I was born, and there is no one that knows my heart and my and mine totally like him. Yesterday, I was blessed with freedom to go to Sunday school with brothers and sisters, worship with church family, and take communion with church family also, to remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, not only for me, but for all nearly 8 billion people on this earth. Don't think that Jesus died just for Christians. Jesus died for everyone. Everyone, God created all. He sent Jesus to die for all. I then attended a meeting with our youth leader and youth team to plan activities for the next three months. It is a blessing to serve with this committee. The youth are our future church after our young adults. I come home from church. I came home from church and was blessed to worship as I watched Let Us Worship rally in Estes, Colorado, which that is who I've been doing the 21 days of prayer with, and it was the 21st day, and um, many were saved and delivered from addictions. They threw their drugs, they threw their vape pipes, they, drew, they threw everything on the stage. They were delivered from those addictions. It was pretty awesome. Then last night, if that wasn't awesome enough, I mean, I was spiritually charged after that. That was great watching that, watching everybody with their hands up, praising and worship, just unabandoned praise and worship, which is what I love. And that's what I love about Christian concerts, which I haven't been to one in a while. But that's okay. I may not be able to if they keep doing the mask thing and all the venues. I'm just, I'm not up for that. I can watch them at home on YouTube now in my jammies. Okay, where was I? I'm sorry. Then last night I watched 
worshiped with for King and Country and Phil Wickham, listen to the simple gospel message of Greg Laurie and witness thousands, thousands, people, thousands that got saved and added to the kingdom family. And that was at SoCal Harvest Crusade. So I have watched this crusade for years. Then I got the opportunity to go to both Harvest Americas when, like, it's happened twice at Arlington, and I got to go to both of them. Feel very blessed. Blessed memories of these spiritual experiences. Many were added to the Lamb's Book of Life yesterday, and the angels of God rejoiced. It is such an awesome day. It was such an awesome day. Um, today is a new day, and God brings us new mercies and blessings each new day. Each day, not each say, I got to go back and fix that. Each day is full of things we must do, things we need to do, and things God has called us to do. Please spend some time with God today in His Word, in prayer, and praise. It has always been Him. He knows you better than anyone. He cares for you and will listen to your prayers. If Jesus is not your Savior today, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Do not wait. Come just as you are. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. All right, well, that is what I wanted to share with you. And please go listen to that song because it is an amazing song by Phil Wickham. All right, well, it is time for a salvation message. And I am thinking that we're going to do a short one. Let's do the bracelet. I really like the bracelet. That's pretty short. I may have a shorter one. This one's good. I like this one. Well, that's in Spanish. I can't read that. Okay. There's like two sides. One is in Spanish and one is in English. Um, E-Band 3 Resources is who this is. All right. I'm trying to get the gold on both cameras. It's really hard. It's really, really, I don't know why it's hard, but it is. Okay. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. Okay, we got the dark. Got the dark with the question mark. Black with a white question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. That's what I was talking about a while ago. Sin separates us from God because God is holy. And we're never going to be perfect. We are going to fail. But when we do, we need to repent. And we need to ask for forgiveness. We don't need to stay where we are. We need to turn away and move on. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty of our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? 
And then we have the red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, well, he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. We don't have to be. It's our choice. The white color with the red. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away, wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. This question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus's gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So have you? And if you have not, then repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The green color on this bracelet represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Because we don't want to just get saved, we want to grow. We want to learn to, the heart represents, the greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And then the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. The next one is the little praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. The next one is the water droplet. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. So then you have the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. It is an awesome place to start. And then you have share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. And that's so important for us to share the gospel. Because if, if you knew somebody was in a burning house, would you not try to get them out? Would you not try to get them help? That's why we want to share. Because people that are not saved, there's only two destinations. One is heaven with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And the other one is hell. So there's two paths. 
two paths to choose and we must choose. I can't get my cameras right. Okay, well, I am going to give you God's blessing. If you did invite Jesus into your heart, then you need to know that the angels are rejoicing. They are rejoicing as much as they rejoiced last night over thousands and hundreds. They are rejoicing. They rejoice over one lost soul that comes home. So this is God's blessing out of Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So we all need peace in this world. But we need a peace that flows from Jesus, from the love of Jesus. Not a false peace like the peace to come in the tribulation. A real peace. The perfect peace from Jesus. Okay. Well, I think I have done everything that I came to do. It's Psalm 28. I'm going to try to do a testimony tomorrow night. But I didn't have time to print it. I just now got it saved in my computer so I can print it. Um... I think I'm going to do my testimony tomorrow night. I did one um, in Sunday school, Sunday before last. I think I'm going to share that. Maybe it will help somebody. I was going to do it tonight, but I ran out of time. So I'll do it tomorrow night. Um, let's pray. God, again, we just thank you. We thank you, God. I pray for anyone that comes and listens to your word tonight, God, that you would bless them and their families abundantly, that you would protect and provide for them and lead and guide them, God. We pray the same things for our families, for our friends, and we just pray, God, that you would give us a boldness to just go out and share your truth and share the gospel of Jesus to everyone that we see, God. Just help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus. But help us to stand on the truth, God. Help us to stand up for your truths. Not to fall for the watered down truths or the other people's truths. Just your truths, God, because that is the measure that you will judge us. Is by your truths and not ours. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I am a left eye's itching. It may be my mascara that makes my eyes itch. I think it's something outside. All right. Well, I hope y'all have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.